is it infinity? Negative. Excellent. Good. Stay with me. I uncover the next step. Now I need to discuss where e to negative infinity is going. What do you think? Always remember this is 1 over e to infinity, which is huge. Where will 1 over huge go? Infinity? 1 over huge. I have oh. I have 1 pi, yes. I want I have 1 pi and I I want to give a piece to everybody on the planet. When I get to your door, assuming I I start in China, how much will you get? Absolutely nothing. So then I know that this piece approaches 0. Let's uncover the rest. How much is 78 times 0? Zero? 0. 0. Let's uncover the rest. How much is 22 plus 0? Zero. Twenty-two. Zero. $22 dollars plus 0. 22. Excellent. So then this limit is 22. This is the ambient temperature. So when we take the coffee off the stove or whatever liquid or food, eventually the temperature in time, as time increases without bound, the whole thing will have the same temperature with the uh, uh, atmosphere, with the room temperature. That's all it means. So how did I do this again? I started from the root. Where is the root? Right here, t. When t approaches infinity. When t approaches infinity, this approaches negative infinity. e to negative infinity is 1 over huge. 1 over huge approaches 0. So then this is 0. 0 times 78 is 0. 0 plus 22 is 22. And this is the horizontal asymptote at positive infinity only. So eventually, from somewhere, if this is y equals 22, Eventually, the temperature will get closer and closer to the um, ambient temperature. That's it. That's all it, it says. Also, another way, although I prefer discussing it so we can understand it, another way would be you punch in the function, and you have 22. Very easy to answer something like this, 78. Be very careful how you enter the function because that could be a big issue. Negative point zero four one x. Close the parenthesis and increase the time as you please. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty-five minutes, a hundred minutes, a thousand minutes, or ten million thousand units, and that's it. So that's what it says. It says eventually will get closer and closer to 22. That's for you to check. I think it's more important to understand what's happening than just plugging in numbers, but it works. You would, you know, it's not um, a bad idea to always check. Okay? So you increase, 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 increase. This is beyond the it's too big to even the cal calculator to calculate anything, really. So it gives us the horizontal asymptote. OK, uh, I think we established everything we needed to know for 2.1. So let's say 2.2. Derivatives. Let me stop for a second. Do you have any questions for me? Of, of exponential and log functions. So to that 2 and to that 3 and this is the end of chapter 2. So when we look at the exponential function, 
This is the nicest derivative ever. This is it. The function is its own derivative. Very nice. However, can anyone give us an idea of what will this equal to? I should say here times the inner function prime. Why I don't? Why don't I put this in here? Why don't I write times x prime? It's one. Because it's one. Very good. But now I have a function. Any function, not x, not plain x. What do you think the derivative will be if this is not plain x but a function? Any ideas? The function and the, and the derivative of e? Not the derivative of e. We don't write the derivative of e here. We have to follow the exact same, this exact same pattern. E of f times f. Prime. Prime. Exactly. Awesome. Good. This book, for some reason, does not use any other log, any other base. I would normally, what would I do with my calculus class, I always present also a to x, any base not e and also a to a function, of course, prime. But they do not appear in your book, so I'm not going to overwhelm you with that. So I'm going to open up for discussion. That's it. That's the entire section 2.2. I don't have anything else. We just have to practice. So if I find my keyboard, uh, page 210. Okay, so let's uh, choose some uh, differentiation. We don't need to go to huge extent to you know big second derivatives. It's not really necessary. We'll choose. You choose anything you want from one through forty-six. First, de first derivative here, and also the second here. What I'm interested in is in looking at some uh, word problems and moving on to log. And I'm ready when you are. 45. 45. So let's look at 45. Perfect. 45. I'm on page 4. And 45, you said. 45. Very good. f of t equals the square root of e to 3t minus 1. Perfect. Let's decompose this um, function, first of all, in, in functions. This is number one. This is function one. And this is function two. And then this will be function three. And this will be function four. So first we differentiate the square root. Can anyone refresh our memory how we differentiate the square root? 1 over 2. Uh, the square root okay. of, and I have to uncover it now, awesome, e to 3t minus 1 times the inner of t. e to 3t minus 1, let's write it in two steps, prime. So first I differentiated the square root. But now the second function is this, and I have to differentiate it. Then eventually I'll get to the third function and to the fourth function. OK, good. I'm going to copy this. Times. Now, I have a sum or a difference, the same thing, sum or difference of two terms. I have to differentiate this. When I differentiate this, what do I get? Perfect. So I only have to 
differentiate e to 3t. We just talked about this. e to a function prime is e to the function times the function prime. So what should I write? e to 3t times 3t that's, prime. That's it. And t prime is 1. Awesome. That's it. I will just rearrange it. There is nothing I can do to simplify it. I will put these at the top. This times this times this. And the denominator here, of course, is 1. 3e to 3t over 2 the square root of e to 3t minus 1. Very good. Awesome. Any questions on this problem before we choose the next? I have a question. Yes. Didn't you say that it was um, when you're doing uh, the derivatives of exponents? You yes. You need to get uh, the function on the inside prime. Oh, okay. It was 3t. Sorry. So let me, let me just say two different things. I think... I know what you're referring to. So when we have a function to a power, we use a certain formula. When we have e to a function, we use a different formula. See here, this is a constant. This is not a constant. So when I differentiate this, I get n, f to n minus 1 times, you should always say this in your head times the inner function prime. But when I differentiate e to a function, I don't put f and subtract 1 from, no, 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 no. This is a different situation. The function is here, not the power. Here the function is the power. So this is e to f times the inner function prime. You may have not had the same idea in mind, but I just wanted to clarify these two and put them side by side. So do not confuse the two situations. When you have the base, which is a constant, E, Euler's number, to a function is one thing. When you have the function raised to a number, this is a number, not a function. It's 5, 10, 11, 1 fifth. Okay? So please remember this should be carved in stone. Awesome. That's why we need communication between me and you. So then if you have something in mind that maybe that I didn't emphasize, um, then we discuss it. Thank you for saying that. Now here we're asked to find the second derivative. We can, but it will be a mess. So let's continue with the second derivative. Okay, so... The first derivative is 3 halves times e to 3t and times e to 3t minus 1 to negative 1 half. And you can say, how do you come up with this? It's, we don't have to, we can keep it as a fraction, or let me write the other option to find, to consider 3 halves e to 3t over the square root of e to 3t minus 1. It will be a mess no matter what. It's not a friendly situation at all. So let's see what we do here. So you prefer this, we will continue with the ratio. You prefer this, we'll continue with the product. The constant will stay outside no matter what. We're not going to involve the constant. We're going to try to make it as easy as possible. So which option you want to use? It doesn't matter to me. Since we chose 45, we have to finish it. So which option you want to continue? You want to continue with the ratio? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So then now the second derivative, 3 halves will stay outside patiently waiting. Top function, bottom function. The denominator has to be squared. And when I square it, that's, I get power 1. If you want to write 1, there is no need. It's clear. When I square the square root, I get power 1. 
Now, top function prime, e to 3t times the inner function prime times the denominator, minus top times the denominator prime, 1 over 2, the square root of e to 3t minus 1, times the inner function prime, 3e to 3t. I don't think anyone can see it over there. I'm going to write it one more time. So the second derivative, 3 halves, e to 3t minus 1. You don't have to write it twice. I just need to because it's not clear over there. So e to 3t times 3 times the square root of e to 3t minus 1 minus e to 3t, 3e to 3t over 2 the square root of e to 3t minus 1. As I promised, quite messy. I have a question. Yes. Where did you get um, the 3 root e 3t minus 1? Uh, Bottom question at the left hand side. Uh, are you talking? Are we talking here? Yeah. Well, yeah, that part of the three. So, the top function prime, e to three t times three. Okay. Times the denominator. Minus the top. times the denominator prime. But we have the denominator prime. We already calculated it. So it's 3 halves e to 3t over the square root of e to 3t minus 1. We just calculated. This was f prime. So we just really copy it here again. Is that okay? 